The first results of the so-called decisive offensive in Ukraine have been a great disappointment for Russians. The invaders attacked the five directions at once, but have not yet achieved significant success in any of them. On the contrary, they suffered a crushing defeat from the Ukrainian army when trying to attack Vuhledar. According to CNN, citing sources in American and British governments, the Russian army was not ready to go on the offensive, but launched it under political pressure from Kremlin. In this video, a column of Russian tanks is seen attacking Vuhledar Donetsk region. The exact date of filming is unknown, but the outcome is clear. The attack ended in a complete fiasco for the occupiers. Go ahead and make a cemetery. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> The failed assault on Vuhledar caused a wave of criticism of the Russian military command. Moscow propagandists called the crushing defeat the Vuhledar catastrophe. The elite 155th Marine Brigade of Russia was defeated in this battle. And this is our broken machinery. We are going to Vuhledar. Here is another tank. And the same picture continues in a straight line. This is the first major defeat of the occupiers in the so-called decisive offensive, which is underway on five front lines in Donetsk and Luhansk regions. They didn't expect us to prepare and properly mine all the approaches to our positions. They were so mined that they failed to approach. They ran into mines and began to retreat, fleeing through some minefields, attacking us from the south near Vohledar and from the north to Leman. The enemy tried to surround and encircle our main units that hold the Donetsk front line. Undoubtedly, this was to be their largest operation and our defense forces managed to disrupt it. The occupiers have not made any significant progress in the svatove kremina section of Luhansk region, the regional authorities report. But the Russians managed to advance on the northern outskirts of Bakhmut, near Chervona Hora. However, the Ukrainian military denies that the enemy has gained a foothold in the village. The most pessimistic scenario is that we can withdraw from Bakhmut to other defense lines. I don't foresee any major changes in other areas, even in the area of Kupiansk and Dvorichne, where the Russians are moving troops, they are not advancing at all. Although they have been trying for a long time to reach a section of territory that would allow them to move towards Leman. This is not really happening, so I think that the most dangerous situation is around Bakhmut. But in terms of strategic implications, even a retreat from Bakhmut doesn't carry any risk for any operational advantages. The UK Ministry of Defense summarized the first results of Russia's so-called decisive offensive. Over the past two weeks, Russia has likely suffered its highest rate of casualties since the first week of the invasion of Ukraine. Based on data from the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense, the British claim that Russia is losing more than 800 soldiers a day. But defense is also costly for the Ukrainian army. The occupiers will try to improve their position on the front line as much as possible until spring, experts say, while the Ukrainian armed forces prepare for a counteroffensive and wait for Western weapons. This week, at the ninth meeting of the Rammstein contact group, the partners announced another package of military aid to Ukraine, which will include air defense systems, tanks, artillery and ammunition. The Kremlin is still betting that it can wait us out, but one year on, we are as united as ever. And that shared resolve will help sustain Ukraine's momentum in the crucial weeks ahead and help Ukraine travel the challenging road that lies beyond. Meanwhile, training on Leopard tanks for the Ukrainian military has begun in Germany and Poland. Major Vadim Khodakov and his comrades came to the Polish city of Sviatozhov directly from the front line in eastern Ukraine. The tankmen liked the equipment very much. They are mastering it quickly. 
We are currently very short of armed vehicles, and I hope that when we arrive at the front line with this equipment, it will save many lives of our soldiers and bring our victory closer. We appeal to our allies asking them to also provide Ukraine with Leopards and other tanks. As part of this component of assistance, we want to assemble the entire armed brigade. We have a positive response from our allies, and not only in terms of Leopards, the British are offering challengers, and we are also joined by our neighbors, the Germans. Almost two dozen countries have already agreed to provide Ukraine with modern tanks. However, there is no agreement on the supply of Western aircraft, in particular F-16 fighters, yet. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Latest news, trends and analytics on all about Ukraine. Like, share and subscribe. Any questions, proposals and comments, contact us via email.